This is an Ant Podcast Management production. Amy and I travel for adventure to get out of our comfort zone and experience something different. This desire means that we often overlook destinations on our doorstep. For us, growing up in the UK, France is a very good option for holidays. It offers cities, beaches, mountains, vineyards, and much more. Convenient? Yes. Is it out of our comfort zone? No. But incredibly, France is the most visited country on the planet. Maybe the road less traveled is for a good reason. Many parts of the world consider French culture to be the height of sophistication and beauty. This is a country that has contributed so much to the world. But like most European colonizers, it has also taken a great deal. It's time for What the Foe to see what all the fuss is about. We can only hope to scratch the surface as we head to Bordeaux in the southwest. Maybe we'll be surprised by this country we think we know oh so well. Let's find out. Hello and welcome to What the Faux Travel Podcast. I'm Amy. And I'm Nick. We've been together since 2008. And instead of saving for our future, we spent all our money on traveling. What is a pension and should I have one? (laughs) Strap in as we take you on adventures around the world. From the high mountain tops. To reporting from under the deep blue. There isn't anywhere we won't take you. Where are we going today then, Amy? Today, we're off to Bordeaux in France. (laughs) Hello, or should I say bonjour, and welcome to What The Faux Travel Podcast with Nick and Amy. Hi guys, thanks for joining us for another episode. Now, it had occurred to us after four seasons, we're now on season five, we've done nothing on France. So I thought it would be a nice idea to reach out to Bordeaux Tourism and ask them if we can visit. Fortunately, they said, oui, oui. <laughs> I was going to put that in there. If you said yes, I was going to say, well, actually, they said we. Oui. <laughs> You're not the only one that can speak another language, Amy. <laughs> I'm actually awful at French. All I can remember is a little bit from school is, je mangeais le petit déjeuner dans la cuisine. Do you know what that means? Something about breakfast in the kitchen. Yes, I eat my breakfast in the kitchen. That was for my GCC exam. Thank you very much. Brilliant. I mean, we're only a minute in and there's so much French goodness on this episode. Wow, so much culture. Now, although this episode is going to be Bordeaux focused, uh, we have also in our 30 plus years on this planet, we have been to France before. I mean, we've been a few times and there's a couple of areas that, you know, we have been to Paris, but only as a young child. And Amy, I mean, you've you've driven through Paris, so there's not much we can we can tell people about Paris, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've only driven through, you know, just on my way to other adventures. What did it look nice? Yeah. I mean, it was it was like one in the morning, weirdly, both times it was yeah in the middle of the night. So not much vibe going on as during the day. But I mean, it was nice enough. We'll move on past that then. Speaking of nice, I have been to Nice. <laughs> oh, nice segue. <laughs> which is, I mean, it's it's really nice. Uh, what is it? Bon in French? Is it Bon? Yeah, I think Très so, bon. yeah. Très it's, bon. It's beautiful. It's on the south coast. It's close to uh, like Monaco and like Monte Carlo, that rich area, Mediterranean Sea. Beautiful. Like I'd recommend Nice because it's like a bit more affordable than, you know, your Monaco's and, and places like that. But everywhere you look, architecture, beach, food, it was all really beautiful. So I would recommend Nice. I can't, again, can't go into much more detail because the whole time I was there, I was inebriated. Yes, it was your stag do before we got married. And for the Americans out there, your bachelor party. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, well, maybe a strange choice for a bachelor party. Uh, that was a terrible. I don't think so. American. No, but the only reason it was because there was football on. It was the it was the Euros. There was lots of football going on in France, and I'd picked a destination that was nice and sunny. So that was good fun. 
Yeah, you look like you had a great time. Uh, we've also been skiing quite a few times in the Alps, obviously France, because that's the episode we're talking about today. Chamonix in particular. We've been there quite a few times, actually. Is it three or four times? I think so. It's really convenient. It's, it's quite a big city, lots of options. You're town, city, town. You're in the mountains, loads of skiing. Fly to Geneva in Switzerland. You get like an hour, hour and a half bus. I remember it's not long. And yeah. then you're in Chamonix. Recommend it. Not cheap, but really, really good for a ski holiday. Absolutely. Yeah, really good skiing. My one tip with Chamonix is when you're booking some accommodation, make sure you've got, you know, bed sheets included. Because <laughs> do you want bed sheets? Don't, don't assume that there's bed sheets. It's it's turning into a bit like a Ryanair flight where it's like, do you want to go to the toilet? Do you want to breathe air when you're up there? Would you like purified cabin air? Yes, please. I would like to get. The other side alive. Thank you very much. <laughs> this particular accommodation we booked, it was like uh, we were playing some kind of mystery game. It was like, go to this point in the city to pick up the key, and then go to this point <laughs> yeah. to where the apartment is, and then go to this place if you want to pick up some bed sheets for an extra oh, cost. Oh, my goodness. Um, so I think we just wish we paid. We were trying to go cheap. So we probably just wish we paid for an, a more expensive hotel, which has all that stuff included. Yeah, and actually, I shouldn't blame that on France. I think all, a lot yeah. of ski resorts do that, actually. It's very strange. Why do you assume skiers don't want to sleep on bed sheets? It's so strange. Always include bed sheets if you own a hotel. Thank you very much. I love it. So apart from, we're going to talk about Bordeaux in detail, but the whole rest of France, done. <laughs> <laughs> done? Do, you know... I bet you've got no questions for the rest of France because we have covered it all. <laughs> so true. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll revisit the the rest of it. But hey, a lot of Bordeaux is going to cover a lot of the culture, so it's fine. Don't worry about that. And this next part is going to cover a lot of France. It is. Is it time for Game Show Facts? <laughs> yes. Can you introduce it, please? Yeah. Uh, Nick, I think it's time for Game Show Facts. Off you go. <laughs> <laughs> France in Western Europe encompasses medieval castles, alpine villages and Mediterranean beaches. The population is around 70 million and the economy is the world's seventh largest. Paris, its capital, is famed for its fashion houses and classical art museums. French is the official language of 29 countries. French was actually the official language of England for about 300 years between 1066 and 1362. There's one country in South America that speaks French, and that's French Guiana. In fact, it's not even a country. It's part of France, meaning that they use the euro and they are in the European Union. The 1789 French Revolution was a pivotal point in the history of France. It started with riots by disgruntled peasants and ended with the abolition of the French monarchy. Napoleon Bonaparte was a French military leader and emperor who conquered much of Europe in the early 19th century. However, after a disastrous French invasion of Russia and a crushing defeat at the Battle of Waterloo, he was exiled to the remote island of St. Helier, where he died at age 51. In France, you can marry a dead person. France was the first country in the world to ban supermarkets from throwing away food. Modern winemaking techniques originated from Bordeaux in France, and we have the Romans to thank for starting it all off. Live snails must have a ticket to ride high-speed trains. French law forbids couples from kissing on a train platform. Men between the ages of 17 and 40 of any nationality may join the French Foreign Legion. Serving in this army can earn you French citizenship. Very good. Like, so normally after Game Show Facts, we have a chat about one of them, but there's loads I could pick out of there that I, I have so many questions. What stood out to you? The dead person? Well, yeah, ofs. That's, it's actually, it sounds um, bad, but it's actually really nice. Uh, it's for special circumstances. So let's say, for example, let's say like a fireman or a policeman is like killed in a terror attack or is killed trying to save people. The, the girlfriend or boyfriend of the person that, that's died, to honour them, they may legally marry them, Aww, which that, is nice. That is actually very sweet. But I'm thinking, is that so that you inherit what they've got? <laughs> yeah. That, I, I mean, mean, come on, let's be honest. All laws are about money, aren't they? 
Uh, yeah, that's a good point, actually. I saw the romantic side of it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm there for the money. <laughs> the most surprising one to me was in England, we spoke French. For 300 I years. I have never heard this fact in my life. Can you elaborate or do you not know any more? Just from doing a bit of research, because we're neighbours, you know, for hundreds of years, our histories are so intertwined, uh, royal families intertwined. So we might have had, you know, French over here ruling or British over there ruling. That's it, really. That, that's the best answer I can give you. We're just, we're very mixed together. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, if it's other countries, like, I don't know, what's next door to Romania? B- uh, Bulgaria? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Maybe that could be the new Capitals game, like board the border game. Oh, oh, you've heard it here first. Oh, you've heard it live. Oh my god, that's a brand new game, the border game. Yeah. Oh, we'll do that's that. fantastic. I'm gonna write that down just so I don't <laughs> forget it. The border game, born on the Bordeaux episode. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what well, I forgot what I was saying now. Oh yeah. So if I can't even remember what country is next door to. Bulgaria? Oh, you said Bulgaria. But like if their language is intertwined, I would just think, oh, that makes sense. But when it's us with the French, <laughs> well, we think us of- rivals, I just didn't think that would happen. Yeah, we like to think of ourselves as different or enemies. But the truth is we're friends. Most of history we've been friends, sometimes not frenemies. And I think it's a friendly rivalry really, isn't it? It's like, it's a bit of a joke. I mean- I don't know if you've noticed, but I look particularly, f- I think I look French for this episode. I've dressed up and I've got my um, black turtleneck jumper on and I just feel like I look quite French. I see what you mean. I thought I'd. Oh, all right. Anyway, back nice. to game show facts. Thanks. Guys, it's so hard to get a compliment out of this guy. No, I'm joking. <laughs> he actually compliments me all the time. <laughs> I don't want to do it now because the listeners will be like, they'll want to change. Throwing up. Change yeah. the channel. Right. And my final one that I'm going to bring up, the snails. And I'm really hoping you can elaborate on this because it doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, okay, I can't elaborate on it, but it's a bit like um, if you travel abroad with your pet, like your pet needs a passport and they're like live goods, snails. The French eat a lot of snails. I'm sure they're valuable. So it's just about, it's just paperwork, but they need a ticket technically. All right, you you clearly don't have the answers. I'm going to stop drilling. (laughs) It's just a nice fact. Yeah. Yeah, snails need a ticket. <laughs> okay. Oh, and couples can't kiss on a platform. Can't elaborate on that either. It's probably one of them old laws, you know, like hundreds of years ago. I don't just, think so. Which was just never changed. I don't think so. That makes a lot of sense because I reckon there was an accident where a couple were kissing and they got killed by a train or something like that. Maybe. Don't kiss anyone or you Ever? might die. Yeah, you might die. So just be careful out there, kids. <laughs> if you have sex, you will die. Sounds like a <laughs> sounds like a, a school uh, sex education lesson. Yeah, they yeah they do love scaring you in school, don't they? Right, let's stop talking about sex. I know it's the French episode, but you know, let's stop talking about that. That's coming up later. <laughs> is it? Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Keep listening out for sex. Right, language lessons with myself, Amy if you uh, didn't know who I was. And Lulu, our French friend. We started with the obvious. How do you say hello in French? Bonjour. Okay, I'm I'm pretty surprised if someone doesn't know that. (laughs) Of course, that is like the most simple thing to say, I guess. How do you say please and thank you? Well, it depends. It depends if you know the person or if you don't know the person. If you know the person and it's a friend, you will say s'il te plaît, which is like the normal you like friendly you and if you don't know the person or you want to be a bit sophisticated then you can say s'il vous plaît which is like the more upgraded I did not know that I mean I've learned French in school and obviously being our neighboring country I've heard a lot of French but I didn't know I knew there was kind of like a a more civilized way but I didn't realize that happened with please as well exactly when you say please well it's like s'il te plaît or s'il vous plaît and just be careful who you're talking to some people can be offended by having a t interesting okay and then how do you say uh, thank you merci for this one you don't need to ask more questions and there's one that's a bit more than that like merci beaucoup oh yeah you have merci beaucoup yeah I actually say it a lot merci beaucoup is it true that French is the language of love (laughs) oh well um 
I don't think so. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think Spanish is the language of love, or Portuguese is the, sm the language of love. French is, well, okay, if you speak French in Paris with an accent and with your loved one, then yes, it would be the language of love. But in France, in general, no. We're kind of rude, I have to say. <laughs> So now we've got the basics in French, we're ready to explore Bordeaux. When we first arrived, we were told to get to the tourism office for 10 a.m. sharp. We were a little late. And we had to find a man called Bruno. Bruno? Hello, bonjour. I didn't see you. Oh, ah, okay. just walked past. No, no, because I was just on the other side. Ah, okay. My nice pleasure. To nice to meet you. Me too. Sorry, we're a little late. No, that's so French. Okay. Is it French? Oh, good. We are French. <laughs> My name is Bruno. I'm guide in France, but I'm from Bordeaux, and it's a real pleasure for me to show my city. After a walk around the city, we stood outside our lunch spot, which was called 1925, to chat to Bruno about why he thinks Bordeaux is so special. Uh, this is so special because Bordeaux have an harmony in architecture of the 18th century. is a classic European uh, city. When the committee decided to protect the city to the UNESCO in 2007, they decided to protect 1,810 hectares of the city. It's the biggest urban city protected in the world. A lovely city, around 65 different Bordeaux wine appellations. When you like wine is a paradise, a question of quality of life. We have the beach, the Atlantic tourist near. Uh, we have a gastronomy so typic uh, with Bordeaux wine, you understand what I mean? And it's just, take it. Me, I propose, you, you decide. On our tour with you today, we learned that Bordeaux has changed quite a lot over 20 years. So you have tourists now, but why didn't you have tourists before? Because uh, it was in 1995, we have a new mayor, Monsieur Alain Juppé, we changed our way of life. Uh, the first project, it was no more cars, no more traffic, and we have a so special tramway. The second one, it was a restoration of the building. Bordeaux was so black, so dirty by pollution, and we restored them in just 20 years. Amazing. Our way of life changed, and lots of people arrived in Bordeaux. And one of the last projects of the Mayor, I'm sure that you know, the so fast train TGV, we arrived in 2017. And don't forget, I mean, it's now Paris is uh, just two hours from Bordeaux and not Bordeaux is just two hours from Paris. <laughs> the most famous thing from Bordeaux is wine, right? But what is the culture of wine in the city? So, for example, if you went out for a meal with your friends, is it that it's obvious everyone's going to drink wine or is your culture so about wine that it's not cool anymore? And so, for example, if you're drinking with friends and someone doesn't want to drink some wine, would you be happy about that? Or would you never speak to them again and spit on their shoes? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> no, Amy, we are open if you don't like wine. First time, I'm surprised. Uh, listen to me. When the people ask me, Bruno, what is for you your best Bordeaux wine? I answer all the time the next one. Wine, it's like a perfume. All the girls I met, when I'm in the street, so quickly, few seconds, I smell a perfume, okay? For me, a girl that uh, would smell Chalimar of Guerlain, me, I remember my girlfriend. You understand what I mean? For me, a perfume is a woman. When you discover a wine with the time, you can't forget the impression in your mouth, in your body of the perfume, everything. And if you don't like wine, it's me to try with you. You like a sweetie white wine? you like a strong red wine. You understand? You tell me I don't like. I can support people who about everything say I don't like. You test it. No, never. Don't say it. You don't like. I think uh, you have a very impressive French accent. Can you say something to our listeners which is very French and very sexy? <laughs> Not at all, but I, no, 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 but uh, the most of the time when I, I finish my uh, tour, 
I s use an expression used by one of my green mother. And it's not a sexy expression, but it's also a French expression. And after I try to translate in English, it's a little bit difficult. Uh, when she reserved at home, all the people, I remember I was a kid, she said, oh, my God, we have so lovely time. Uh, the food was incredible. Your, the table, the decoration, your heart of conversation. And my green mother, I remember she said all the time, I hope to give you, I tell you in English, the souvenir to come back again. And the French expression is, j'espère vous avoir donné un petit goût de revenez-y. And I hope, I mean, uh, Nick, I give you just a little bit the idea to come back again. How can our listeners contact you and do one of your tours? Oh, okay. Uh, first one, I have a website, but so old, don't look. Okay. <laughs> and I have a phone number, uh, but in this one website, you can find my phone number. And I have an email in French is B comme bordeaux.com if you're translating english is be like bordeaux okay because my name is bruno berrier bb bb in bordeaux become bordeaux fantastic and just to finish if you see something a place a sunset a woman a man food and it's so beautiful what do you say my gosh it's just so bordeaux <laughs> In terms of a good character for our podcast, Bruno was a gift sent from the <laughs> podcast gods. He really was. Like, just as soon as I saw him, I thought, yes, yes, this is perfect. <laughs> that wasn't a sexual yes. Bruno, you're you're beautiful, but <laughs> I'm here with my husband, so. And he just looks like the most French man ever. Like, tall, slim. He was wearing a beautiful suit. It was a suit, wasn't it? It wasn't yeah, just a jacket, it was, very, it was a full very suit. Very dapper. Yeah, very dapper. Like, I, I'm pretty sure he even had a handkerchief in his pocket. And one of those, and I think it's very French, is the, the moustache that he had. Yeah, like I don't even twirl, know the name. Yeah. Twirl the end. You can pull it from the side and you twirl it. I mean, I'm I'm doing it on camera now, but you, if you're listening on the podcast, you won't they know to see that. But yeah, fantastic character. We loved our time with Bruno. It's so, it's so much fun and he gave us a great tour. Uh, so, I mean, he gave his details before. It'll be in the show notes as well, but I, I really would recommend uh, if you want someone who's not your average tour guide, definitely contact Bruno uh, when you're in Bordeaux. He smelt good as well. Uh, that was the, the bit I forgot. How close did you get? Um, not that close, but if somebody smells good, you can smell it. Yeah. No, he, yeah. 10 out of 10 for presentation and for... Uh, professional job performance performance yeah God, how, <laughs> how close did you get <laughs> so uh yeah we we then went in uh, had lunch in a restaurant called i said earlier 1975 but it's not that's a band from manchester 1925 <laughs> and we were really impressed by this restaurant we, we're not going to go into too much depth about like every restaurant we ate in we are going to give you some recommendations but we want to highlight this one because it just felt like such a like sophisticated nice french restaurant i remember it was a monday lunchtime so most people in there they're like they're on their lunch break from work but they're probably having important meetings everyone's suited and booted everyone's having like two or three course lunches of this fancy food everyone's drinking wine again it's 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 a monday lunchtime which i wouldn't normally think you know many people would be out drinking at that point and it's almost like the culture there is is not do you want wine it's what wine do you want <laughs> yeah do, do I, and we I got just, asked I just that felt, question quite a few times i just felt very like i just thought oh like this place is sophisticated the food is tasty i lo love the ambiance the the waiters the chef everyone's like you know dressed to impress if you know what i mean uh really impressed by it and i remember the value wasn't too bad we had a three course lunch and like each and a glass with of wine, wine. Yeah. yeah with wine and i remember the bill was like 80 or 90 euros and it was a nice posh restaurant like really nice where like the waiting stuff it's not just a job for them this is like a full-on career they take yes. so much pride in their job and uh yeah and we were short on time they accommodated us very well and uh, yeah the food was so good like i mean everybody raves about french cooking french food a lot of the big chefs around the world they want to study 
French cooking. Yeah, and, and obviously I've seen that before from the other times that we've been in France, but this is where it really clicked for me in this restaurant where I was like, okay, wow, I really, I am impressed by this place. So yeah, 1925, big recommendations from us to go there if you find yourself in Bordeaux. Yeah, and what I would say actually about just eating from, okay, from my experience, eating in France, and this proves that we're not just saying everything's fantastic. I'd say what the experience we had in 1925, like a mid-level, nice restaurant and above, France has got you covered. Oh, like Definitely. absolutely. You can't go wrong. I think where people struggle and some people think, I don't understand why everyone says French cooking is so good. If you're looking for like a, a cheaper restaurant where you want to pay like 10 to 20 pound for a meal and, and you also want good quality... In my experience, that's when you can struggle. And some people might think, oh, like, what's all the fuss about? But yeah, a mid-level restaurant and above, like you're in heaven in France, I would say. And I'd second that. I do. I really do believe in that. Yeah. If you're just looking for a snack, I don't think it's the right place. You go to France or particularly Bordeaux for the good wine, for the good service, the good food. And, and you don't just go for one course, you go in for three courses. You go in to be wined and dined and looked after and that is like your activity for the day. And so earlier I mentioned that we were a little short on time in 1925 and that was because our next activity, even though I just said <laughs> food should be your only activity <laughs> in <laughs> France, but this is a good excuse for another activity. It was a wine tour. We were off for a wine tour. Obviously. So while we had our creme brulee in our mouths and we were running late, we literally had to run from the restaurant 1925 to the bus to catch it ready for the tour, <laughs> which was fun. It was only a few minutes run, but when you're full and you literally have creme brulee in your mouth. <laughs> it was... I'm sure everyone knows the feeling. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I'm not the only one that's experienced that. But we got there and we were on our way to St. Emilion. But when we got on the bus, the bus driver, he wasn't happy. We, we, we were too, <laughs> he was we were, not happy. We were two minutes late. That's it. Like, that's not a bit. Normally, these tours accommodate for people being five, ten minutes late. We were two minutes late. He was unhappy and he show, he was clearly showing us how unhappy he was by like pointing at his wrist, you know, like time. And he looked very angry. And this is this is a theory I have where I've heard we're going to talk more about like stupid stereotypes later and we're going to be debunking them. But a theory I have is where some people say, oh, French people are rude. But my theory is they're not rude. They're just honest and, and direct, because if that was in England, the bus driver would also be annoyed and he would be angry that we're leaving late, but he wouldn't show it. He would, to the customer's face, he would, you know, do a fake smile. He or she would do a fake smile. Oh, it's like okay. Grit no his teeth. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. No problem that you're late when really they hate you. <laughs> and they will curse you behind your back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. In Britain, we talk about you behind your back. <laughs> in France, they do it to your face. <laughs> so I just think the French are more honest and direct not rude. Yeah, I'd agree with that for sure. I'm not sure. Is if, is that maybe just part of, maybe we've heard people say French people are rude because we're English. Yeah. So we hear that because of the whole rivalry thing. I don't know if other countries think that. I think a lot of other countries think of France as quality, sophisticated, like we said at the start of the episode. Romantic. Oh yeah, for sure. But yeah, I agree. I do think they're straight talking, which I prefer. So once we're on our way to saint Emilion. The tour guide had a message for the whole bus, but really, we knew it was a loving, personal message just for the two of us. Uh, the appointment, uh, we will leave all together and we have to leave on time, ready, to be able to uh, be on time at the winery. So, as Nick said in part two, we will be actually speaking to a real life French person Whoa. about their view on stereotypes. Are the French good lovers? <laughs> oh, honestly. And uh, so during the, the aging process, we have uh, still uh, the different batches of wine separated depending on the grape varieties, the type of salt. Uh, so my name is Karine Laveau from uh, Chateau Bernato. So after a tour around Chateau Bonetto Vineyard, we sat down in this garden outside the front of the house under a tree 
The weather was beautiful. There's a nice breeze in the air, but we have a muff on our mic, so you can't hear the breeze. But no problem there. Uh, but it was a beautiful September afternoon, sun shining. We sat down at this chair and table under this tree in, a, in this front garden of this chateau. And we asked her, why is Bordeaux so famous for wine? Uh, that's a very good question. I think I think what is nice with Bordeaux is we have a, a, a diversity of uh, wineries uh, ranging from a um, small uh, small family uh, vineyard with only a few acres of vines to uh, very famous and prestigious uh, premier grand cru classé, famous all over the world. And so I think for people, they they have a chance to see really. Uh, places they've heard of and they will see some uh, quite simple buildings and some very uh, big uh, architectural uh, chateaus so that's uh, I think this is this probably this diversity uh, which makes uh, Bordeaux so attractive and and also that we have uh, appellations which are famous uh, uh, worldwide so that's uh, probably a combination of both I will say. What makes also the, the wines uh, really uh, famous uh, outside of the, the tourism is the is really the, this combination of the uh, the soil. So, for example, here in Saint Emilion, we have this special uh, uh, clay and limestone soil, which is great for the for the Merlot grapes. Uh, we have these uh, weather conditions, which are very temperate, so uh, a little bit of rain during the year, but uh, uh, summer that are usually quite uh, sunny and dry, so perfect for ripening the grapes. And that's how this uh, combination that makes the wines uh, very very special uh, for very special around here for someone who doesn't know anything about wine what's the difference really between a six euro bottle of wine in the supermarket and a ten thousand euro bottle of wine I think there, there are two differences for me. Uh, there is really a differences in, in a very cheap wine and a more expensive bottles in how the wine is made. If it's uh, if it was hand picked or picked with the ma- harvested with the machine, uh, if it was uh, aged in the barrels or uh, for for a few years, or if it was aged for a few months in a, in a vat. So I think that explains the difference between uh, like a yes five or six euros bottle of wine to maybe a fifty bottle uh, fifty euros b- bottle of wine, and then for very expensive wines. I think it's more uh, in terms of the brand. The, 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 it's like luxury products when you uh, when we talk about handbags and uh, and shoes, and that's about the same. You have, uh, uh, of course, it's more expensive to make, but then it's also the the reputation of the brand and the, the rarity of the product that makes uh, the bottle worth uh, that price. But th- there is definitely a difference between cheap and more expensive wine. But there is a stage where maybe the difference of the price is more than the difference in the in the cost of production at the beginning and then just finally uh, if somebody's coming to bordeaux how would they get in contact with your winery how would they, how would they come here they could go to uh, the work with a website which is called Rue des Vignerons where they could book online a tour at the winery. We open every day uh, uh, all year round so that's uh, quite easy to to, to find us and uh, tours in French and English and we also work with some uh, well like the tourist office of Bordeaux where, where you come uh, with whom you come today some agencies that organize wine tours uh, from Bordeaux for people uh, so yeah there are different options or contact us directly and we'll, uh, we'll find a way for them to to be able to come (laughs) fantastic one final thing very quick i think i know the answer to this question if wine is your job can you still enjoy wine yes of course (laughs) definitely (laughs) so that was our wine tour and I would really recommend Saint Emilion for sure. I mean, you might even have heard of it because it is very famous wine region, and you would have probably seen it on many wine bottles if you're an Alki. <laughs> 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 but yeah, Saint Emilion, fantastic place, and we had a very good experience at Chateau Bernetto. I really love the name; it makes me feel like I'm French. So, <laughs> um, right after all of that wine chat, we're getting a little bit peckish. Bonjour, madame. Good evening. Would you like to ha- have a seat at the table? What wine? Wine? That's German. What What wine would you like to have? And now I'm saying like Borat. What wine would you like to have with your meal? No, you sound like you're from Holland or something. <laughs> no, <I'm> Swedish. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, Swedish, that's it. You sound like Phoebe on Friends when she's giving the massage. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you should do accents. You're not very good at them. But yes, while we're here in this restaurant setting, clinking our wine. Romantic. Great. It's beautiful. Love yeah. is in the air. We're hungry. We thought, what more of a perfect place to talk about our, ho- our hotel recommendations? No, <laughs> our restaurant recommendations. Obviously, we've already spoke about 1925, which Nick likes to call 1975. Yeah, uh, People are going to get confused now. We keep saying it wrong. But it's 1925. I'm sure that's a very poignant year. I feel like there was a reason. Maybe that's when it opened. Who knows? Something good happened. I think there's a French beer advert, which I think it's Cronenberg. And it's like, I can't remember the year. They're like, 19, I don't know, 1962. Uh, a bad year for something, but a good year for beer. Oh, yeah. It's Stella Artois, isn't it? Nah, I'm pretty sure it's Cronenberg. What's the one where they say, oh, it's good, but if it's... Carlsberg. Oh, like, okay. if Carlsberg did... Holidays. That's it. They'd be the yeah. best holidays in the world. I'm getting anyway, that wrong. Anyway, 1925. I'm sure it was a good year for gastronomy. We were there for lunch, uh, so I don't know what it's like in the evening. I'm sure it's still fantastic, but we went for lunch and we loved it. Yeah, biggest recommendation. Loved it. I'd fly back to Bordeaux for a 1925. Oh. Definitely. Yeah, I would as well. Second recommendation is a place called Ganache. Now, this is cool because it's separated in two parts. You've got Ganache, obviously, you're you're thinking chocolate here, but you've got like a chocolatier shop where you can buy their own chocolate that they make and then also the restaurant. Before getting there, I did wonder if the restaurant was going to be solely sweet food, but it yeah. was it was like a proper restaurant and the food was very good. You had that fish, didn't you, where it was very like theatrical. They brought it to the table and then deboned it in front of you, which which was great, but you've get very uncomfortable in those sorts of situations don't you oh we sat there just like looking at it and then you look at the person doing it and you make eye contact and you're like no look at the food again and like wow <laughs> good job you're doing but no, it, it was it was it was impressive to watch and i forgot all about that fish and i remember telling you that night i said i'm not exaggerating that was the best fish meal i've ever had in my life it yeah. actually was and I, I completely forgot until you just said it but what i also liked about ganache I think that's where we got the best service. We, we were well looked after there, but I feel bad because I, I think the manager, I think that like he thought we were really famous or something. <laughs> he did, <laughs> which, yeah. Which we are not. He was like, <laughs> it was really nice because like a member of staff said something to him and then he came <laughs> over to us and he's like, it is such a pleasure to have you. <laughs> such a, that was a good accent. It is such a pleasure to have you in, in my restaurant. <laughs> I, I am honoured. And we're like, okay, I don't think he knows who we are. I think he thought maybe we were Cara and Nate. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, we're just some kids from Jumps in Essex. <laughs> <laughs> we like podcasts. <laughs> I just sit in a room 12 hours a day recording podcasts. <laughs> uh, yeah, bless him. He did think we were famous, but he made us feel special. Yeah, he did. It was great. So check out Ganache. I'm just going to fact check you a little bit there because earlier we said that 1925 had the best service and now you're saying it about Ganache. So can we get your true opinion, please? I was most impressed with the whole experience in 1925 and I felt like a rich French businessman. Okay. Ganache, just the service alone. I actually then had the best fish in my life. (laughs) Yeah, come on. You're you're lying Uh, somewhere. (laughs) Well, 1925 is our biggest recommendation. Ganache, I had great fish, best I've ever had. And just the manager was really nice because he thought we were famous. (laughs) Yeah. And with Ganache, uh, right at the end, I don't know if it's because he thought us famous or we were famous, sorry. He gave us some chocolates at the end, didn't he? Yeah. With our bill. I don't know if that happens to every meal, probably. It's a nice little touch if your restaurant's called Ganache. Exactly. So head to the shop, head to the restaurant. You'll have a great time. Third out of four recommendations is City de Vigne, which is a tourist attraction, which we will be speaking about in part two. Is that yes. correct? Yes, part two. But we were at the restaurant at the top and cracking views. This one I feel like is the best for views out the window, right? Yeah, that was spectacular views of the city. Even from the outside, before you go in the building, the building itself, the architecture is amazing. Hasn't it been designed to look like someone swirling wine yeah. in a glass? Yeah, which I, yeah, like uh, in my older age, I'm really starting to appreciate architecture, you know? Yeah. And yeah, I mean, we'll we'll go into this in part two into the building. But yeah, it's 
Like, yeah, if you get some wine and swirl your glass around, the building is meant to look like the wine on the inside and how it's swirling around. It's it, such a clever idea. And the whole building is made out of wine materials. And by that, I mean like the wood, like in the barrels that it would be sitting in. So you see a lot of wood. Um, what other You can materials? buy some flip-flops made of, made of cork. Yes, and trainers, not flip-flops. No. Get it right. Trainers made out of grapes, like old grapes. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's I what should it get was. it right. Yeah, no, that's right. We both got there <laughs> in the end. I should pipe down, yeah. But I'm actually going to say that's it that we'll talk about for City Duvin because we're talking all about it next episode because you don't just eat food there and drink wine. There's lots of other things to do. It's a whole tourist experience, but we are going to be talking about it and we're going to talk to a chef who works there in the next, mm. e- in the next episode. Yeah, which I was going to cool. say that. I do have one more question for you. What do you think of the service in City Duvin? How does it rate against Ganache in 1925? Because you, you're so... It was good, but Ganache okay. in 1975 <laughs> was exceptional. We should call it 1925. I know you're joking, but people are going to go to the wrong restaurant. <laughs> yeah. But City de Vin's good because the, the views, the building looks amazing, and you can do a load of other things as well, not just eat and drink. Our last recommendations for food is Casa Gaia. Although I'm speaking Spanish, it is in Bordeaux, I promise you. Uh, Gaia is spelled G-A-I-A, Casa Gaia. Now, this place, out of all of them, is actually how I eat every day, if that makes sense. So, like, it's a nice, healthy place because I have to be gluten-free. That was super easy. And, uh, like, if you're a veggie, vegan, they've got all the options there. That if I had to eat in one of these places every day, I feel like that's the more... Every, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was still a very posh place, though. Like it was posh, and it the, actually it was really beautiful as well. Casa Gaia. So it's going to be Gaia means. Uh, does it mean soul? It was very like feminine. I feel it was like lots of flowers everywhere. It's very pretty restaurant. And actually, going back to Ganache. Wait, 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 wait. Ganache, the second one that we said. The interiors of that place was insane. They had yeah. stuff like hanging from the ceiling. It's very Instagram, wasn't it? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. And like, e- yeah, literally every seating area was like a new Instagram background. It was, it was amazing. So the three we mentioned at first are like more kind of special occasion, fancy places, but still mm. for a decent price. And Where you then have like ca- many courses. Yeah, exactly. Casa Gaia, you know, it's like proper good, ho- uh, healthy, home cooked food. Yeah. Can't go wrong. Love it. Right. We, we've come to the end of part one already. That was quick. In part two, what are we going to hear? I would say particularly art galleries. Um, they drain me, okay? <laughs> they do. What a good advert. <laughs> what country in the world do you think has the best food? Friends. <laughs> of course, yeah. friends. Easy, easy answer. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a big traveller. And I meet a lot of lovers <laughs> all around the world. So we'll see you in part two of our Bordeaux episode. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you guys, as always. We'll see you next time. Au revoir. Oh, they're going to hate me in Paris. (laughs) (laughs) My gosh, it's just so Bordeaux. Before we wrap this up, we've got a question for you. Is your boy Tarquin going on a gap, yeah? Is your gal pal Rachel off to eat, pray, love herself, silly? Then the best way to support this show is to share it with all your travel buddies. Thanks, Thanks, bye! bye.